The ancient Egyptians were a fascinating people, and one of the most intriguing aspects of their culture is their pharaohs. Among the most famous of these is Hatshepsut, who ruled during the 15th century BCE. Hatshepsut was a remarkable woman in a time when women were largely underestimated. She commissioned numerous building projects and even led a military campaign against the Kingdom of Nubia. Today, she is remembered as one of Egypt's most successful rulers. Hello everyone, and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we will talk about the life of the pharaoh Hatshepsut. So put on your best pharaoh hat and get ready to learn all about Hatshepsut. The first of two daughters to be born to Thutmose I and Amasu, Hatshepsut was the older of the two. When her father passed away, Hatshepsut, who was only 12 years old at the time, married her half-brother Thutmose II, who was son of her father and one of her father's secondary wives. Thutmose II succeeded to the throne of Egypt approximately 1492 BC, after their father's death. They had only one child, and her name was Nefer. Around the year 1479 BC, Thutmose II passed away at a young age, and the throne was passed on to his baby son, who was also born to a secondary marriage. In accordance with the tradition, Hatshepsut assumed the role of Thutmose III's regent and managed the affairs of the state until her stepson reached the age of maturity. However, in less than seven years, Hatshepsut took the unusual step of assuming the title and complete powers of a pharaoh herself, and she and Thutmose III became co-rulers of Egypt. Hatshepsut may have been acting to save the throne for her stepson in the event that there was a political crisis at the time, such as a threat from another branch of the royal family. Previous Egyptologists believed that the queen's ambition was the only thing that drove her to take this action. However, more recent Egyptologists believe that the move may have been due to a political crisis. Hatshepsut tried to defend the validity of her power grab, citing her royal pedigree and asserting that her father had designated her as his successor, despite the fact that she was well aware that her move to consolidate her authority was very contentious. She wanted to give the impression that she was a male pharaoh, therefore she gave orders for her likeness to be shown in sculptures and paintings from that era in such a way that she had a beard and seemed to have a lot of muscle. However, in some of the photos, she is seen wearing garb typical of female royalty. Senenmut, who eventually became her chief minister, was among the many loyal subjects who Hatshepsut appointed to influential posts in the administration. There is little evidence to corroborate the notion that Senenmut was also Hatshepsut's lover, yet this theory has been put up by a few people. During her reign as pharaoh, Hatshepsut oversaw a number of massive construction endeavors, most notably in and around the city of Thebes. The colossal memorial temple at Deir el-Bari, which she oversaw the construction of, is regarded as one of the architectural marvels of ancient Egypt. This was her crowning work. A trading expedition that she authorized and led resulted in the return of vast riches to Egypt from a distant land known as Punt, which may have been the location of modern-day Eritrea. These riches included ivory, ebony, gold, leopard skins, and incense. Her reign was notable for many other accomplishments as well. As a result of Hatshepsut's efforts, the Hyksos rule of Egypt during the Second Intermediate Period resulted in the disruption of the trade networks that had been in place before. As a result, the wealth of the 18th dynasty was increased. She was in charge of overseeing the preparations for the expedition, as well as the money for it. During the ninth year of Hatshepsut's reign, a commercial expedition was sent to the region of Punt. It set sail in her honor with five ships, each of which measured 70 feet in length, carried numerous sails, and had enough room for 210 men, including sailors and rowers. In Punt, a wide variety of commercial products, most notably frankincense and myrrh, were purchased. The trip was memorialized in relief by Hatshepsut at Deir el-Bari, which is particularly well known for its lifelike portrayal of Queen Ati, the ruler of the land of Punt. In the immediate aftermath of the Punt voyage, Hatshepsut also sent raiding parties to Byblos and the Sinai Peninsula. About these trips, very little information is known to the public. It's probable that she directed military expeditions against Nubia and Canaan, despite the fact that many Egyptologists have asserted that her overall approach to foreign affairs was mostly peaceful. Another step she took to legitimize her role was to have the sarcophagus of her father reinterred in the same tomb as her own, so that the two of them would be entombed side by side. After his father's death, Thutmose III ascended to the throne and continued the reign of Egypt for another 30 years. During this time, he established a reputation as a formidable warrior as well as an ambitious builder. Late in his reign, Thutmose III had almost all of the evidence of Hatshepsut's rule removed, including images of her as king that were carved into the temples and monuments that she had constructed. 
This may have been done to remove her legacy as a powerful female ruler, or it may have been done to fill in the gap in the line of male succession in the dynasty. As a direct result of this, ancient Egyptian academics remained unaware of Hatshepsut's existence until the year 1822, when they cracked the code of the hieroglyphics written on the walls of Deir el-Bari and were able to read the inscriptions. It is believed that Hatshepsut passed away in the year 1458 BC, when she would have been in the middle of her 40s. She was laid to rest in what is known as the Valley of the Kings, which can be found in the hills that are situated behind Deir el-Bari. Howard Carter, a British archaeologist, made the discovery of Hatshepsut's sarcophagus in 1903. It was one of three that the queen had prepared, but the sarcophagus itself remained empty. This was the case with almost all of the tombs in the Valley of the Kings. Her mummy was found in 2007 by a group of archaeologists who had begun their search again in 2005. It may now be shown at the Egyptian Museum in Cairo. The Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York City is home to a statue of Hatshepsut that was spared from being destroyed by her stepson. The monument is of life size and depicts the queen sitting. In 2006, a foundation deposit in Karnak was found that contained nine golden cartouches with the names of both Hatshepsut and Thutmose III on them. This discovery may have provided more information about the eventual attempt by Thutmose III and his son Amenhotep II to obliterate Hatshepsut from history, as well as the true nature of their relationships and her role as pharaoh. The question of whether Hatshepsut's reign to a greater or lesser degree opposed or reinforced patriarchy often dominates discussions about her legacy. Hatshepsut was an innovator to be sure. She succeeded in overthrowing the system that had previously only permitted direct mothers to reign on behalf of their biological sons by acting as regent for a son who was not her own. She also made a show of her female kingship during this regency by building massive temples to commemorate it, pushing people to become acclimated to the idea of a woman in a position of such authority. This made sure that the Egyptian populace would recognize her role as a ruler when the oracle so stated. She accomplished all this while seeming to lack ambition and cunning, making sure she wouldn't turn off prospective supporters. If you are interested in learning more about Pharaoh Hatshepsut, make sure to use the link in the description to buy the amazing book about her life. From Queen to Pharaoh is an in-depth study of one of Egypt's most controversial rulers. Author Kara Cooney argues that Hatshepsut was a skilled politician who managed to rule Egypt effectively for nearly two decades. She also paints a vivid picture of life in Egypt during the 15th century BC, providing readers with an intimate look at the culture and society of this fascinating period. And that's the story of Hatshepsut, one of Egypt's most remarkable rulers. Thanks for watching! If you liked this video, be sure to check out our other videos on Egyptian history. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more great content.